Good morning, everybody. John Grimsmo here. Uh, Peter's coming in, I don't know, soon. We're just getting prepped, getting everything turned on for the day. Swiss ran great last night, made a whole bunch more bearings. This guy's getting it set up for, uh, for more today. Angelo's got the Mori doing a warm up routine, and then he's going to get Norseman going. And uh, Steven's already crushing heat treat on the other side. And we got everything's happening as normal. I'm going to turn the current on right now. I want it to be warmed up and usable. We're going to make some stuff, show Peter how it works and everything. And um, yeah, I'm pumped. So yeah, this is the machining room. Okay. Um, so this is the first machine, the first big machine that we got. I mean, I started with one that was this big yeah. in, my, in my garage. So this is a three axis milling machine and it makes all the, uh, the handles, the clips and the blades. Sick. So like you just put a raw piece of metal in there? Yeah, they, they like start out. Uh, just spits it out. So a handle, this is, this is a pandemic handle waiting to be made, right? Okay, cool. And then how do you even get this shape? Uh, you know what water jet cutting is? Yeah. It's like high pressure water yeah. and sand. So we have another company do that for us. You buy the sheets in big thing, I get it shipped to the water jet company, they cut it out, and then they send it to a grinding company that gets it relatively flat and parallel yeah, on the faces. Stuff, yeah. But then we put it on that machine in the corner, yeah. the Angus, and that gets us this finished, which is like really flat, really shiny, really smooth. Yeah. And that uh, that's what gives the knife that kind of almost mirror like stonewashed yeah because they're flat they're so nice beforehand it's so cool to see it all like in pieces yeah so you're always talking about these things they're tombstones or yeah so this one's a fixture and then on that machine it's going to be a tombstone same and, thing and you made this yep to fit these yep and everything's clamped so in place and you know it's got to be located so it always goes back in the same spot how did you make these like how did you, you just you, all that? time man you just figure it out you're an actual genius yeah I don't know. Like, I failed math. <laughs> Three times. I coasted through math. <laughs> yeah. You were that kid. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's... But it's like, you, you find, okay, you're like, I want to make a thing, so how do I hold it? Yeah. That's the first thing in machining, is how do you even hold it? And then, uh, and then what tools do I need? Like, these are some of all the, uh, the end mills that we use. Because we break them, they wear out, they get old. Really? Yeah. We're yeah. cutting. We're cutting titanium and hard stainless steel. What would so this they. This thing cut specifically. Uh, this one specifically cuts the blade on the Norseman, the bevels. The. Dude, this is so rad. And it's like we need enough because we we can't run out. Yeah. It needs to be there when we need it. I don't know. It's bigger than the machine or your flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just stand here and watch that all day? Yeah. First, like, the so, oh, for time. sure. Did you still stand there? Well, now, now you're like, you're making sure it does what you want it to do. Yeah. Because it's it's all, this is all the code, right? It's like a spaceship. Yeah. It literally looks like the cockpit of like a NASA spaceship. And it's it's just, uh, it's cause and effect. You tell it to move a certain way and it'll always do that every time, no matter what. Did you literally, did you go to school to learn this kind of thing? You no, just, just figured it out. It's been 12 like... years. YouTube, man. For really? real? Yeah, there's lots of guys that there have been for the past 12 years. I think you're that guy now. I am that guy now, yeah. And that's my way to pay it back, you know? Yeah, that's cool. I like yeah. that. Wow. And I see it now, I get it in the DMs and the comments, you do too. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, I started my business because of you. And I'm like, dude, you got a $2 million business, like yeah. a year now. Yeah. And you say you started it because of me. I'm like, okay, yes. Yeah. So these two are milling machines. Okay. They make big parts. These two are lathes. They make round parts. So right now Sky is making these uh, ball bearing cages. Sick. The round parts. So you got the pivot, you got the pivot screw, you got seven screws on a Norseman, you got the thumb stud and double thumb stud as well. You got the bearing cages that go on the inside. You got the over travel stop. Uh, mine's special because it's got an insert there. Pen parts too. Like most of the pen parts, the tip, uh, the button, the slider, uh, a lot of things are made on this machine. Oh yeah, you haven't seen one of these. Have you felt one yet? No. Tough. Never. Never. <laughs> I'm, dying to, I'm dying to push the button. Yep. <laughs> All right, what's this thing do? And then this is uh, our other lathe. We got this one in 2016, so we got this one first. Right now you're making clips, right? Yeah. And they need some work, so we've been ignoring them for a while. They're not real, they're not operational. Right? But eventually they'll take on some of the lighter duty work that that machine shouldn't be doing. 
because um, it's like valuable and accurate and stuff. And these can just be the beaters. I even know it. So this this is the Kern five-axis machine made in Germany. I, I it's know like you've been, you've been struggling with your tool storage. Ooh. <laughs> it's like the um, it's the Grimsmo of five-axis machines. Yeah. You know they don't make a lot of them, but they put everything they have into it. And uh, when I first learned about it, it was like a no-brainer. Like it's a million dollars, and that one's 150. Yeah, that <laughs> it's sense. a big deal. Yeah. But. Um, is this the one that came in that giant box? Yeah. It's got a great window. I really just appreciate the everything OCD so cleanly. Yes. You know, it's kind of like our office. Everything's it's it's purposeful. Good. Yeah. You know, it has to be. Um, but yeah, this guy wrote, it's a five axis. So instead of just left, right, forward, back, up, and down, that's three, it's four is your rotation and five is your, your B. So that's C axis. And then B goes that way, either way. So it lets you genuinely get to not just the top of the part, but you can rotate and now hit the side and rotate again and hit the next side and just hit every side of the part aside from the little bit that you're clamping on, depending on what you're making. Like, look, look at what is all, what is oh yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. And the machine can just rotate, hit the next part, rotate, hit the next part, and then put it back here. Oh, it'll put it back oh yeah, side. and then grab the next one. So imagine having 25 of those. That's like prototype, that's zero. And that was made before we got the Mori. Yours does feel better. Yeah. garage yes so that was on the in the garage on the old machine and then that's the next one that I want to make it's a tiny little guy it's tiny yeah Does it flip open yeah so do you always 3D print your stuff first sometimes yeah, yeah. I actually had somebody print that for me a long time ago really um, how long you had this it's 2012 <laughs> you've been wanting to make this for a while though. yeah so instead of two handles that bolt together, that's one solid handle. <clears throat> so there'll be no screws except for the pivot. That's next level. Yeah. That's cool. And it's going to be a button lock. That's like... And it's going to be... What kind of lock? It's going to be a button lock. A button? Yeah. Dude, that's cool. No, one handle. Yeah, like, so... I like where you're going with that. That's going to be that fun. Idea? Slide? Yeah. Which way? Try it. Is it sticky? I don't know. I haven't felt it. Oh, there you go. It looks so good. Is this the one? That's the one. How did you get it on there so small? This machine, man. <laughs> Look, can you even focus on that? Okay. I've never done it before. That's fidget. That's fidget <laughs> heaven. And it clicks too when you push it down. Yeah. Ooh. And it's lighter than I thought. Yeah. And you guys all had a man like a piece of space yeah. on different machines. Dude, this is sick. You number them all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we figured out some complicated code on the machines to uh, count the engraving up every time. <laughs> wow. Dude, Absolutely. That's, That's awesome. yours, man. Because the tool was a little bit dull, and, and Sky and I, you'll see it in the video when you watch it, we're like, eh, I don't, yeah, it's fine. Eh. <laughs> and then I just made another one. Oh, well, that's, that's just a testament to your craftsmanship. Yeah. Because this looks mint. I love that it's mint and it wasn't good enough. Right. <laughs> yeah, that one we tried to sand it down and play with You're it. Still not happy with that. It's cool, but I wanted that. Yeah, I know. This is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the edges are the edges are feathered in. Yeah, it's yeah, blended. Yeah. That is a testament to the Grimsmo quality. <laughs> this is awesome. I'd be psyched with this. Nicely. Yeah, we have that made locally. Wow, that's like 
guys are all about the tolerances. Mm -hmm. You see that closing? Maybe? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Satisfying is the click in the vent. Exactly. They're about six inches. Yeah. And then you see through on the other side. Oh, yeah, there's more. There's 55 little pallets on the other side. So this thing needs to be going for days. Yeah. That's the plan. Like you yeah, just for sure. Calculate it all, you spend the time, yep. you yep. hit go, and then. You just load it up, tell it what to make. There's plenty of tools. You know, there's 210 tools. That's what I've watched you talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Like you were trying to figure out a way to organize them. So For sure. Kind of I don't know. Day, Probably. <clears throat> yeah, I, I bought $100,000 worth of holders and pallets. <laughs> say, are these like two grand a piece? No, these, these are probably five or 600 each. Yeah. But times 200, like. Yeah. And this one here, got to make sure I know where to put it back. Um, this is a tool I had custom designed. This makes the uh, the corner radius right there. Wow. Because before, like a normal corner radius only does one side. So you do it from the top and then you gotta flip the blade over and do it again on the other side. But there was always a mismatch. So we're like, let's custom design this that can just grab it from both sides in one pass. And so we do it there and we do it there. And then it's perfect. That's huge. Yeah. This guy just over here just does this <laughs> in front of me. Just acid etches it like a boss. It's just, how do you do that? How do you just do this? <laughs> this would be 15 YouTube videos. <laughs> it would be like 10 texts and DMs to you and you. <laughs> and it would still not even come out half as good. And he just did it like, like it was nothing. He doesn't even care. <laughs> He's like, oh, Norseman, this just a bum. There you go, done. Easy. <laughs> this place is great. <laughs> the expensive one, dude. No. <laughs> I told you, I, I want to melt it into a bead. <laughs> that was the first thing he said when we sent him the when we sent him John's rask. He's like, "You've ruined everything for me. Thanks." Yeah. He's like, "Well, everything I own is garbage now." Yeah. I stopped the first video where I flipped it open, I'm sitting there at the top-down camera. Oh, yeah, the the office isn't even like furnished yet, and it's like. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were filming what, 7 a.m.? Yeah. So on the Kern, I'm loading up a new Rask blade. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. With only one hand. There we go. Get it tightened up and torqued down with my Sandvik torque wrench. And then we'll change and load this pallet into the machine and uh, eventually make and film some cool blade process. So right now, Peter and Kirk are in the front building. Eric's showing them around, showing them everything that we do in the finishing department. And I've got a package to open. This is from Gen Swiss. It's where I got all my uh, lathe tooling from for the Swiss. So, oh yeah, I got a little cooling hose and I got a uh, turning tool holder with through coolant. Come on. There we go. So that coolant jet, coolant goes in the side or the back and then cooling comes right out the tip and points directly at the cutting insert. Uh, and then I got a couple packs of inserts. There. So, uh, so I need the inserts for the Swiss for sure, but this turning holder is actually going on the Nakamura um, because it's the same style of holder as we use on here. And, we have an Iskar one on there that's actually worn out because I don't like the design of the way it holds the insert in. So we're moving to this, we're gonna put it in, and uh, that's what that's for.
bearing production is going great. They're just, we don't use oil when we're, when we're cutting them, but there's just so much residual oil in the machine that all that dust just uh, sticks to it. But they clean up really, really nice. Over here on the Nakamura, uh, Angelo is making our Saga pen clips. Look at that. Going pretty well, I'll leave this for him. Uh, currently we've only got it set as one part per cycle because we're having some issues with running it automatically. So it's a 20, um, how do I get to the cycle screen again? 25 minute cycle at the speeds that he's got right now. It's a long cycle, but they're going great. Eventually I wanna get this part on the Kern. I want the Nakamura to rough it out and to part it off and to put a dovetail on it. And then on the Kern, gonna have those mini pallets and it'll help hold uh, some dovetailed pen clips and then it can do all the high-speed machining on it with the high-speed machine you know what I was gonna throw this box away but I might just cut the lid off and use it as uh, organizing storage okay so we just ran a uh, Norseman blade or a rasp blade number 13 and I'm gonna run it again. I just tweaked the code for no coolant. And look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> you got Pete and Fraser and Kirk just filming everything. Ooh, having all kinds of fun filming with Peter today. Currently, we're doing a what's in your pocket. And my pockets are full today. This dude's pockets, it's like, I don't know if it's like a cross between a Christmas tree packed with ornaments and like a fisherman's tackle box. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is just normal. It's every day. <laughs> this, his pocket clips have pocket clips. <laughs> so man, what do you think? You've been here for a couple hours, been filming all kinds of stuff. I like, I, I knew I would like it. I knew yeah. I'd be psyched because I like this kind of stuff. But I also knew that I would gain like a much higher appreciation Good. just for like the artistry that goes into it. I knew a lot went into it, but like there's a lot a lot that goes into it. Let's, let's have a seat in our yeah. fort here. Yeah. So I don't know if I've showed you guys, but our one of the boxes that the Kern came in, it just sort of stayed there. And for months we were like, let's tear it down, let's tear it down. And then we just never did. And now we put a bench in there and it's like, it's our fort, it's our hangout. It's actually like really nice. It's, it's cooler out here on like the hottest day than it is inside there. So, oof. So one, I'm a fan of everything you're doing on your channel. I don't even know how you're able to daily vlog every single day. I can't do it. It's hard. I've tried. Yeah. It's a grind. Yeah. Pun intended. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. It was easier through quarantine because I had I had less business responsibility. Yeah. You know, we have an eight person company right now, and I'm the leader, and I have a lot on my plate and a lot of responsibility, and I love it, but. I, I definitely noticed the difference between seven weeks of quarantine where I get the shop to myself to play and basically yeah. prototype Rask and like like do bare, main, bare minimum to keep things flowing. And then everybody came back and it was like, oh man, I can't get anything done in the day yeah. that I want to do because I got to run this place. Um, but it's good. And then, and then trying to keep the vlogs going with everybody here has been a, a fun challenge, but mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be daily from now on. But if we can get, you know, two or three a week. Plus, some Fraser's gonna film some fancier stuff. Was than, it uh, was it like noisier when when people came back? Yeah, opposed to yeah, uh, for sure. Because everybody's blasting air and more yeah. machines going at once, and um, it just is what it is. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, the, the, these videos it's from life. from me, it's vlog life. They're they're perspective into my actual business life. Honestly, though, I think that's what people like. I don't think if you like made it highly produced, right? And you like really tried to make sure all the audio is perfectly crisp all the time. It's like it's the perfection in the imperfection that people yeah. like about it. Yep, yep, and it's fun. It's the reality. Yeah. And I try to be open about uh, a lot, not just the technical details, because I'm I'm free to share almost everything that we do. Yeah. You know, we we try to make things at a level that the big companies, the aerospace and the automotive and all all the really quality companies do. But we can share it all. We can talk yeah. about all of it. It's fun. And it's cool though. And it's also fun to like open up your heart a little bit and like I'm struggling with this or whatever. And you know, I've got a podcast with my buddy John Saunders that uh, we've been doing it for three years now, weekly. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. And it's it's the business of machining and we just talk to each other every week, forty five minutes. 
it's like a private conversation that everybody can listen to. Yeah. And it's like, I'm struggling with this right now, dealing with that, how do you do leadership, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. and then we get super nerdy and, and oh, you got a new lathe. Yeah, let me talk about the <laughs> capto tooling and yeah, the coolant and stuff. And I've got it's, foaming issues. It's like, the cool. authenticity that people like. Yeah. Right? Transparency and authenticity. And I find like that's always what ends up winning people in the end right. over everything else. Yep. But I realize this is now my channel, and you guys hear from me every day. So let's hear from you some. Right, what's up? What do you want to hear? Um, where do you want to go with all this? With YouTube? Yeah, with, with everything, with your career. and. Yeah, I get asked that a lot. Like, what's next, or where do you want to go, or like, what's the end goal? And a lot of times I say, like, I've, I'm, I've reached the end goal. I, I feel like I reached it years ago, yeah. and now it's just what I'm just enjoying what I've worked up to my whole life. So I've always said I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to just kind of, like in a primitive stance, just do what I want forever. <laughs> and that, that was always kind of the goal. So right. this job specifically kind of lets me do what I want all the time. So with YouTube, if I make something, if I make a film, a documentary, it's done when I say it's done. Right. And a lot of people say like, do you want to do Netflix or do you want to do TV series or would you want to shoot a movie? And where those things would be fun, I would rather be like a guest on set mm. or even just like guest act in a scene just to get the feel and the vibe of everything. I don't want to be behind the camera yeah. on those. There's too many people. There's too many moving parts. It's a ton of responsibility. Yeah, and I just feel I just feel so far removed from the creative aspect when it comes to those types of avenues. Mm -hmm. And I respect them greatly, and they are so much work. But I just love being able to wake up, have an idea, execute, publish, move yeah. on. Well, and you've built everything to be short and doable and manageable. Uh, you do have long-term projects, but mm -hmm. I think you're very good about... Um, turning things around yeah. in hours. Yeah. And that has helped speed. You know, it, that makes you a better, yeah. better business And it makes it fun. I find like when I was growing up and I was doing weddings and I was doing just like normal gigs and stuff like that, I found like the longer I would procrastinate on a project, the less and less I would enjoy it. And then it would just start to become less of like the thing I was excited about the day I shot it to the next day not being as excited. And then a week would go by and it's one of those, oh, I have to finish that. Then two weeks is like, now it's getting weird and the client's wondering where yeah, it is. And yeah. then four weeks you're like, I hate this. And then you finally deliver it and you don't like the client anymore. You don't like the <laughs> job because you waited so long and you manifested that. You made that whole thing happen where you could have just got it done. So like the turnaround of YouTube keeps things fresh and it keeps things fun. I think that's important because like I'm I'm like a I'm like a pinball machine. Like I look over here, right. I want to yeah, do totally. that, then I want to do this, then I want to do that, and I forget about this and I forget about that, and that's not cool anymore, and I wanna do this. <laughs> so it's like I, I, I liken it to like fireworks exploding and I'm trying to right. like capture each one before it dissipates and the next one goes exactly. up. Exactly. Right? So yeah. I feel like this drop lets you do that, but at the same time it lets you just slow down and take your time. So that's again true. that comes all the way back to it just lets me do what I want when I want. I love it. Yeah, I find that I get uh, because we're in manufacturing, we make stuff and we're creative and we get to make whatever we want, basically. So a lot of times I get to about 90% in a project and I've I've accomplished my desire. Like, I've I've figured it out, I know how to finish it, and then I don't finish it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like that, that's probably it's a what's challenge. fun for you, yeah. is the figuring it out. You figure it out, then you want to figure the next thing out. Exactly, and then I'm on to yeah. the next when I don't actually finish the project because it's like in my mind I'm past it I'm over it already finishing it is like the work aspect of yeah, exactly. like the job yeah it's, it's fun like, oh, up until the point when it becomes work yeah and it's the, uh, I'm the same with that we get fun all these projects all these all this gear comes in we get to play with it and then when it comes to just the finishing touches and delivering it's like let's just pick it up tomorrow man yeah I just don't want to do it right now <laughs> yeah so how's it been uh how when did you transition from doing everything yourself to bringing on a team and starting to build? Yeah, the well, team? I've, that's something I've always wanted to do because yeah. I'm a big believer in like you can only get so far yourself, and not only that you can only get so far yourself is like I don't want to just hoard all this this coolness, this cool factor, this cool job, the opportunity. I want to just hoard it for myself. I want to share it with other people. And one of like the easiest ways to do that was to bring on someone mm -hmm. that I could help you know, mold and, and teach them and I could learn from them as well. It, nice company to have too. So it's not right. just one person bouncing ideas off of being creative, but being able to extend the fruits of my labor then to the next person, which also contributes to the, the, the whole sphere of things. And it's just, it's kind of like a way of giving back, but it just makes it more fun. And I just realized it, it's a better long-term solution to not burn out if I have yeah. help as well. And I'll enjoy the process more with it. So I think that also goes hand in hand with finding the right person for that. Because you can go through a lot of people that are just not really passionate. They're just looking for a job or just yeah. like, I just need something to make some quick money. You got to find the right person who wants it as well, who kind of shares the vision or is just as excited about making knives and doing these things as you are. Because 
you know, if they're not, it's just not a good fit. Like you all kind of want to just geek out and nerd out right. together. Uh, and it's the togetherness that I, I was looking for to kind of expand. And I'd love to keep expanding. Like you're at eight people. Yeah. Um, you probably never thought you'd be running a company no. with eight people that you're like accountable for. When you think about the responsibility of that, it's it's crazy, but it's it's incredible. Yeah, it's been super fun. And some of the stuff you said in the beginning is, it took me until almost recently, the past few years, to actually understand. Because I was the guy in my garage who just wanted to learn everything and, and hoard the information for myself and, yeah. and and never hire anybody and just be the, the crazy guy in his garage who can make anything. I can do it. Yeah. I don't need help. <clears throat> that, that's been yeah. my answer to anything is I can do that. Why would I buy that when I can make yeah. that? I want to pay um, this guy when I'm, I, I can edit it myself. Exactly. Yeah. And then the business grew and our, our needs and desires and, and goals grew and we started bringing on more people and it just... Even then, it was difficult in the early stages of having employees to to let go and to share information. And yeah. I was I was a hoarder of information. Even still, I'm I'm hoarding still. But I'm I'm learning to let go and and grow the team and the people. And it's it's you know, good. What's funny about that though is I remember younger as a photographer and developing my technique, and I started to kind of see that I had a style, and I was really exciting because people would would recognize that style and they'd be like, "Wow, that's that's a, that's such a Peter McKinnon shot." And mm -hmm. How do you edit like that? And some of my friends would be, how are you getting those results? And my, my immediate instinct was like, figure it out. <laughs> I've just spent the last how many years figuring it out for myself. Like right. I'm not just gonna give it to you so then you can be Peter McKinnon. Exactly. But then I had a complete mind shift and I just thought, what's the sense of hoarding all this information? Because one, if I die, it dies with me. Yep. Two, you can, I'm not the only place you can learn this information from. It's either I learned it from somewhere, totally. obviously. I didn't just manifest these skills from nothing. Right. I learned it from somewhere. I was inspired by somebody. And then three, like if they're not going to learn it from me, they're just going to learn it from someone else. Yeah. So I just thought I have a, a unique ability to just kind of make learning fun. I've, I've, I've learned. My mom's a teacher. My dad was a teacher. Nice. My dad's a public speaker. My mom was too. So like it just kind of runs in the family. I was an entertainer before this. I was a magician for 10 years on stage doing shows. So I've got a way of connecting with people. And I just figured like, I'm just gonna give it. I'm just gonna give it all away. I'm gonna teach everything I possibly know. And it wasn't until I started providing that value for people, without restriction. Yeah. That's when I became yes. successful. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And that's that's what we try to do in the shop too. Like a lot of companies will hold their secrets and they'll make a a glossy like promotional video once a year. Mm -hmm. Whereas we're just like, let's just turn on the camera and show. 98% of everything we do. Let's let's hold on to a few key aspects that make us special and we just don't want to share, but everything else, like, let's just go. Just show it and share it. And Real life. I, I've seen, it, it's helped our channel grow, it's helped our audience grow, and I mean, we were talking about this earlier. Loyalty. Loyalty. We, we, get, we get emails from people that are like, um, I just want to thank you because I've started a business and I'm making really good money now because of your influence. Like, yeah. they are able to attribute their growth and success to us and what we've done and I don't even know how to comprehend that information it's a, it's a pretty big thing to carry it's, yeah it's pretty wild it's just, and I get a lot of that and yeah you know we have a relatively small following but it's die hard and I don't need it to be any bigger yeah it's it's great we have more than enough customers to do our what our goals are and the fact that we're having the impact we're having at this level is like just wonderful just yeah. stunning yeah I love it and that's ultimately I think what probably drives us both to keep going is, is those types of things yeah. those types of stories and those types of uh, people that support our art because that's in the end what it is yeah yeah exactly yeah I never thought of myself as an artist because I can't draw a circle to save my life um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what but, a circle is <laughs> but we are artists in yeah. our own ways yeah and uh, it's really interesting and fun to, to think about it like that yeah and and it's it's developed my eye to see art in many other things, especially in manufacturing, because now, like, literally everything is made. That whole pocket dump series, everything in there was made by somebody. Yeah. And most of the stuff that we all carry in this company are custom made by small companies because we yeah. want to support them. But, I mean, I mean, your hat was made with certain stitching and yeah. blah, 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 and everything is made to a certain degree, and it's allowed me to appreciate the intricacy and the difficulty of making stuff, yeah. anything. I've always said it's... Um it's the details that make all the difference. Yep. And those are what people spend a lifetime perfecting. Yeah. Are the details. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, yeah. yeah man. It was fun. We have another visitor. Erin's back. Hey. She hasn't seen the new shop yet. Yeah. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, man. Look at this. Look at this. What? Yeah. The actual? I won't even say it. This is so sick. Look at 
let me show you this. This apparently wasn't good enough. It's perfect, it's flawless. I, I, I don't even, I don't understand, but apparently it's not flawless. I'm taking it home because it's so sick. But this is like a throwaway piece. Oh, oh. I got a two hour drive home. How many clicks do you think I'll do on the way home? Leave in the comments below, I'll let you know. Okay, bye for there, uh, thanks for having us. It's colder outside. Go Team Canada. Peter left us some swag. My, uh, my, my field notes is, is dying. Maybe I'll move to one of these. They're smaller than I thought. They're like the same size and thickness as the field notes. I appreciate that. Flying the flag, baby. Here you go, Eric. But yeah, he gave us some titanium dice, di dies, and the Canadian mint coin with his bucket shot picture on it. Beautiful. All right, guys, I gotta go home a little bit early today. Uh, Peter just took off. That was a super duper fun day. He's a riot. He's a really good guy, and I'm glad we could have him here. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, it was it was really fun. Yeah, uh, very down to earth. Like you, you kind of think like people with a huge YouTube following are gonna come in and I don't know be like different people, I and mean, you're like, oh no, it's just he's a cool dude. Like totally hang out with him all the time. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was really wonderful. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was good times. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's today's vlog. Take care. Bye.